everybody. Today, I'm going to show you how to fix spaghetti line charts. And this is some data I pulled together from the World Bank on average life expectancy by country and year. And it's pretty interesting data. Um, if you look at this, if you look at this chart, you can see a bunch of things kind of jump out, which is that Iraq kind of goes up and down. Um, Namibia experiences a precipitous drop in life expectancy. And then toward the end, toward 2020, you see a downturn in a lot of countries here. And so there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here, but this, this is not a good chart just because it's got too much data that's too hard to separate. You've got to constantly be looking back and forth between the lines and the, the legend. And so we want to think about kind of how do we improve this? And one of the things I would really recommend is there's a book called Better Data Visualizations by John Schwabish. And I think it's perhaps my favorite data visualization book, highly recommended. And he talks about two different ways you can fix these, these spaghetti line charts. The first of which is going to a small multiples approach. And I generally, I generally really like small multiples. But in the case of line charts, I think they're not as effective as, as they could be because it's still hard to say, okay, like if we're comparing Cutter and Aruba, um, it's hard to say by, you know, kind of looking across, you know, a number of grids, how those two lines compare. And it'd be much easier if they were on the same, the same visual, but readable in a more direct way than in this spaghetti chart. And so the other way that John Schwabish talks about improving this is, says you can put an unlimited number of lines on a, um, on a line chart. But what you need to do is you need to make the important ones stand out. And so ideally what you'd like to do is something like this, where you have, you have all the lines in gray, in a light color, and then you have the, the important line, in this case, Brazil, that we've highlighted stand out as, as highlighted. And the normal way we would do that would be to go through um, some DAX with conditional formatting. So we would take a simple measure like this, the CF line color. If the selected country was equal to the country in the slicer, we would turn the line orange. If not, we turn it gray. And we would just go to the, the FX button in the, um, the format pane or in the new on object formatting. Um, if you're using the current version of Power BI and you have that preview function turned on and we would select that, um, that line color and drop this measure into there. The only problem with that is for some reason that I have never understood, um, line charts don't have that sort of conditional formatting option. So if we go, if we go here to the line chart and then we go to lines, what you'll see is no FX button, that there's no way to, there's no way to control the color from, from using DAX and conditional formatting. And so originally I thought, okay, that sort of chart is just not going to be doable in, in Power BI in the way that, that John Schwabish recommends. And then I saw Carlos Barboza in one of his reports actually do that. And at first I, I couldn't figure out how he did it. And, you know, I thought maybe he's using a different version. I looked at the, um, I looked at his PBIX file. Um, it didn't have the, the FX button for the, the conditional formatting. And then I saw what he did and it's really, it's really quite brilliant. And when you see it, it, it's, it's not difficult to implement, but it's a trick you've got to, you've got to, you've got to see to, to kind of fully understand. And so what he's done, he's done something really, really clever here, which is instead of having one, one measure with conditional formatting, what he's done is he's taken and created separate measures for each for each country. So very simple measures here in terms of the average life expectancy, and then just filtered by country equals Brazil, country equals Denmark, country equals Guinea, and so forth. And then what he's done is he's taken advantage of the secondary at Y axis in, in the line chart. And he's created a, another measure called selected where 
basically it's the same thing, but then you apply a filter condition, and this is where you put data country equals your your harvest country from the slicer. And then what you can do is when you go into um, into the format pane and you select lines, what you can now do is when you go down to colors, is you can high, you can format all the colors in gray except for the selected in orange. And then what you can do is you can go in and if you go to the um, the secondary y-axis, then what you can do is you just take that and set the color of that to the same as the background color, and that will turn off the secondary axis and make it look like everything is on the, the same primary y-axis. So the, the effect of this is really, really good. So if you, if you click through, you'll actually see kind of a, a subtle animation moving the line, and it really highlights just the data that you, that you want to see. Now, there's, there's one minor problem with this, and it, it relates to tooltips. It's not a big problem, but what you've got here is, in this case, you've got the selected line repeated twice in the tooltip, once as the country itself, and the other is selected. So in this case, Iraq shows up as selected and as Iraq, once in orange, one in, once in gray. And that's not a huge problem. Um, I think this is still a pretty informative tooltip. But if you don't like that, um, Carlos has another way that he came up with to fix that. And that is through the use of um, a report tooltip. And so in this case, what you can do is you can create a report tooltip and then just filter that tooltip down to only the, the selected country so you don't get the, get the repeated value of the selected country and the the full the full range of the other countries, including the selected country. So that's that's the way you can go about fixing this. As I say, I think it's a it's a really excellent trick, and it it really improves dramatically the use of line charts. Until hopefully um, Power BI incorporates the traditional conditional formatting into the the line chart. So hope you found that helpful. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.